Do you think that you are promoting unattainable standards of beauty in any way? No, I don't. Because I think we get up, we do the work, we work out. This is it. No breast implants, no surgery. Do you ever get weirded out or freaked out when people get plastic surgery to look like you? Hello everyone, it is me, Salem. Welcome back to my channel. We need to talk. If you're not new here, then you know that I have beef with TikTok. Not necessarily the app itself, just the really dumb trends that I see there. From people body checking themselves by using filters to determine whether they're attractive or not. Why did I just sound British right there for a little bit? <laughs> Anyways, to grown people making dances to um, little kid songs. Potato, small 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 potato. I hate it here. <laughs> Usually these trends are pretty somewhat harmless, besides of course the super toxic ones. But y'all, I think I have found literally the most dangerous and deadliest and toxic trend yet on TikTok. How did we go from people doing this small potato, small potato, small potato, ah! to this? Liquid buildup is gonna feel like your body is on fire. You're constantly gonna be waking up with that pain. BBL actually has the highest death rate. And there were actually Instagram models that passed away because of getting too much plastic surgeries done. So the pain is probably equivalent to like not working out for a long time. So the way she explained it is not my experience at all. Um, clearly her pain level was somewhat mild. I was about to die. It's literally like getting dropped off in the jungle and getting your ass whooped by 20 gorillas. If you don't really know what I'm talking about, then you're probably not on the plastic surgery side of TikTok. But what you probably have seen is the memes of the BBL effect. I'm not gonna lie, I laughed along with some of the videos too, but here is where the problem occurs. You know the saying behind every joke, there is a little bit of truth in it. This whole BBL effect meme stuff was obviously inspired by the fact that the BBL plastic surgery procedure has become super duper popular. And for those of you who don't know what a BBL is, it's basically this plastic surgery that sucks out all your fat from everywhere and injects it into your butt and hips so that your body can go from this to this. Really, it should be called the Kim Kardashian effect rather than the BBL effect, but we'll get into that later on in the video. So stick around. It's like I'm doing ASMR. Follow me on SoundCloud, SoundCloud, SoundCloud. That was really good. When we joke about something, we begin to slowly normalize it. Then in turn, the truth behind the joke gets embedded into our unconscious cognitive part of our brain, which is just in charge of processing the perception, memory, learning, thought, and language without being aware of it. You are learning without knowing you are learning. In other words, the BBL trend is a lot more deeper than you think. This video is going to be a little long, and we're gonna discuss a lot of topics that are going to make people uncomfy. But for now, sit down, grab your favorite stuffed animal. This one's mine. His name's Octavian. And grab a drink because this is gonna be a lot. Speaking of drinks, today's episode of me making a video on whatever's pissing me off this week 
is brought to you by Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine club that picks a variety of wines that best suits you and your taste buds. And don't worry if you're a newbie to wines like me, they literally have an option on their website called Wine Novice. Just click on it and it takes you to a super cool quiz where you fill out what your favorite tastes are and your favorite preferences, which is really fun and interactive. Y'all know I love when services like this have quizzes because I'm extremely indecisive. So the pretty pictures help a more unlike me choose things better. Oh look, candy. I like flavors that are light and more sweet and I enjoy pairing my wine with a group of close friends, which really means my dog because I don't have any. You get recommended a bunch of wines that suit your taste and then they arrive at your door. The box is really cool and 100% sustainable. It comes with your wines and these super neat cards that tell you a lot about your wine, like the flavors, where it comes from, and even the pairings you should try with the wine. My personal favorite was Obscura, which had a flavor of blackberry jam and a hint of vanilla, which was such a treat. And if you also want to treat yourself or find new wines from around the world, your first four bottle box will be 60% off if you just click this link, which will be pinned in the comment section down below or in the description box. All right, let's do this. First, I just want to say that this video is not meant to bash people who are planning to have plastic surgery, who have had plastic surgery, or are pro-plastic surgery. This video is meant to be an open discussion on the BBL effect, the historical context behind it, and the negative sides of plastic surgery. I also recommend to watch these YouTubers and what they have to say on this topic as well for more information. They are literally my faves and I took a lot of inspiration from their topics in this video, so please go support them. Your body isn't good enough. The standards for how women should look like seems like it changes every single week um so it's kind of hard to really originate where this trend came from but what we can do is look at history to see where did this shift happen how did this become the ideal body for modern times for women beauty standards have always been around us. The first time we see an ideal body is in ancient Egypt, the dates being 1292-1069 BC. <sighs> Don't ask me to pronounce the full um, numbers, I, I just can't. I'm not a scientist. And around this time, the ideal body beauty standard for females was to be tall and slender, to have narrow shoulders, a high waist, and a symmetrical face. In ancient Greece, the standard was to be plump, and pale, you know, full-bodied. In the Han Dynasty, the ideal body type was to have extremely pale skin, a smaller frame, so smaller waist, small feet. In the 1400s through 1700s, the standard was to be very ample-bodied, having a round stomach and full hips. <sighs> if I was born around this time, I would have dominated. In 1837 to 1901, in Victorian England, the beauty standard was actually still to be plump and full-figured. However, around this time, fashion statements were a huge part of the ideal woman beauty. This is where we start to see really tight fashion corsets to create a dramatic hourglass figure. This is where we see a pretty drastic change when it comes to beauty standards. Um, for female beauty. We are now coming up to the Roaring Twenties and around this time, the ideal female body was to be flat-chested, no waist, to be fairly thin and even boyish and extremely short hair. Then we kind of revert back to the full-figuredness, which is the golden age of Hollywood. You know, around the 1930s and 50s, women who were curvy and a cinched waist, such as the Marilyn Monroe body type, was considered ideal. And then the swinging 60s went back to the boyish slender figure and this type of body type actually stayed around until the 2000s except it took it in a more extreme way around this time size zero was basically the ideal size for every woman this is where we see women like paris hilton lindsay lohan this is also the era of the rise of the supermodel who were ideally this body type now if y'all were paying attention i think you could really pick out a certain pattern in these um beauty standards and one can only guess that after these few years of going from big to small to small to big to big to small we would have an era where we have a mix of everything and we do the modern ideal body type is to be slim thick big hips and a big butt but you have to have a thigh gap 
and no stomach and thin arms. It's so it's kind of like someone went back in time and said, hmm, I like these attributes and characteristics in this era and this era and then they put it all together to make this um jumbled up mess you have to be a small framed type of curvy you can't be too big but you also can't be too small this type of body type was popularized through social media specifically the kardashians i feel like all the problems i have in my life can be traced back to at least one of them and honestly i deserve compensation for that this is where we see the rise of the instagram model they have perfect skin it's all evenly toned no acne they all have the same exact body type this body type is notoriously known to only be achieved mostly through plastic surgery rigorous diets rigorous exercising but mostly plastic surgery, specifically the BBL, which the Kardashians deny ever having. Sure, Jan. This body type is very rare to be born with. Of course, the BBL was meant to um, almost imitate um, black and Latina body features, but without the black and brown. Getting plastic surgery um, in order to obtain this type of body has become glamorized by influencers and celebrities and Instagram models. However, this body type wasn't always meant to be that. A really good point brought up by Adela Afandi was that this trend started out as something healthy. People were tired of seeing the super thin body type being in because it was becoming toxic. So the body positivity movement started focusing on bigger, ampler, ampler, ample, we'll go with ample, ample bodies and for a while actually started off pretty good. However, um, a point that Adela brings up is that a lot of these things start off healthy and then just kind of end up being toxic kind of like a never-ending loop of a toxic cycle and the reasoning behind this is it becomes toxic when people start to push boundaries and basically go to drastic lengths to achieve uh you know whatever body type is in trend at the time look i'm not anti-plastic surgery but let's be honest there has now become a glamorized filter over the horrid truth of this bbl trend we correlate this body type with success with luxury with perfection when the truth is the very women who helped popularize this type of body type girl they're not even happy with themselves which is honestly really sad and the promoting of this body type and lifestyle isn't only in surgeries which is something that i feel like no one really talks about it's one of the reasons why there is such a huge market now for photoshop literally every influencer photoshops their bodies to the point where we don't even know what is fake and what's real and what i mean by that is some of these photoshop jobs be making the people that we follow look almost unrecognizable and the usage of photoshop in influencer and celebrity lives have become such a necessity that they freak out if they don't have their photos photoshopped literally do y'all remember the chloe kardashian controversy sis literally freaked out that there was a picture of her on the internet by the way that i can't show because she copyrighted it because she said that that's not her and that what she actually looks like is this. On Wednesday night, Chloe took to Instagram to really stick it to the haters and naysayers. She posted a video of herself in a bathroom wearing nothing but underpants while listening to Ariana Grande's song Point of View. P.S. Yes, I did a live to show you all this isn't photoshopped. Which by the way, um, videos can also be photoshopped. It's not just images. There is a lot of videos out there where women cinch in their waist with a video editing software and a lot of girls on TikTok use it for when they show off their outfits or whatever. I think it's pretty like bizarre how far Photoshop has gotten to the point where we can now manipulate just everyday videos of us simply trying on outfits. We've become reliant as a society. Um, on always looking perfect 24 7 which is really what this body type tells me it's about looking perfect at every angle not having a single flaw you have to be photo ready 24 7. we are feeding more into the fake 
dystopian version of our bodies than our natural bodies. We now have clothing brands that are for this specific body type that's so, it's so hard to achieve. I mean, the perfect example I can bring up is Fashion Nova. The models on their website and Instagram, girl, I cannot. They don't look real. Like, it's not... It's almost concerning and I can say that because Fashion Nova has literally gone into controversies for posting people who are literally not real. Like their models photoshop themselves so much to the point where I swear they're not people anymore, they're just IMVU characters. And then when women with real untouched bodies buy their outfits or their clothing, they're severely disappointed because their clothing isn't meant for women who have normal bodies. They're meant for women who have the perfect Instagram body. And that $40 pair of jeans doesn't come with the BBL. Of course, you're gonna be disappointed when you try it on and you don't look like the models on their website. Women's bodies themselves, the actual thing is the trend. And we are expected to be ever-changing whenever a trend is in. If next week the trend is to be skinny, we're expected to do whatever it takes to get there. If by a month from now, it's back to the golden age of Hollywood beauty, we're expected to mold our bodies, you know, immediately to get to that beauty standard. And it's so dangerous, it's tiring, it's exhausting, and it's emotionally burdening. And the fact that there is now young women who are 17, 16, saving up their money to go out of the country so that on their birthday they can get a BBL is so upsetting to me and I'm tired of people claiming it as it being empowering when in reality it's just the fact that we as women are always being put under this pressure cooker of needing to change how we look. These are teenage girls. They're not even fully developed yet and they already want to change how they look because they know that after their puberty, they're not gonna have a glow up. You know, the glow up. Glow up culture tells us that we have to be beautiful and that we have a time limit as to when to achieve that beauty. Glowing up is another phrase for going through puberty, but the glow up process focuses on the improvement of physical appearance, overall attractiveness, and individual style. And honestly, that's also why we don't see a lot of preteens anymore, because media has made its way so deep inside our brains that preteen girls aren't allowed to go through puberty. They're not allowed to be cute anymore. They have to go straight to being attractive, which is really disturbing. And I'm planning to do a video on that <laughs> later um, because I have a lot to say about that. You don't see them going through the phase of figuring themselves out because they're too busy trying to figure out how they're going to come out being the most attractive because they're terrified of looking their age. And a big part of that is the Kardashian effect and glow up culture. And I cannot believe that there are plastic surgeons on TikTok duetting these preteens and young women who are talking about the things that they don't like on their body, duetting them, making it seem like it's funny, like, when you're 18, come see me, I can take care of that for you, or telling them, if you want to do that, then you should get this procedure. I cannot believe how normal it's become to have plastic surgeons on TikTok. And honestly, that includes the ones that y'all think are chill. The main focus is always on the end goal, the glow up, the end goal of the BBL. We forget how painful and draining it is to get there. And that's not me saying it. That's the women who are part of these BBL trends coming out with their stories of how horrible the experience was. I just wanted to say that just because doctors can do it so seamlessly and so naturally does not mean that your body will accept it inside. I just wish if I knew that before, I would have just loved myself. It's just so messy and I feel like there needs to be a lot more education not only on the procedure but the dangers in general. So I went ahead and invited someone special. You guys know her already but for those of you who don't know, she's actually a RN, BSN. Come on SAT words, let's get into it. My name is 
Stephanie Tovar. I'm a bachelor's registered nurse and Salem invited me today to share with y'all some evidence-based information as well as scholarly articles that are peer-reviewed from journals about BBLs and the consequences. So I'm actually really excited to dive into this. So a BBL stands for Brazilian butt lift and funny enough it's actually not a butt lift. Liposuction is used to extract fat from the desired areas of the person, right? Whether it be arms, legs, stomach and then that fat is then injected into the desired area which in this procedure is the booty and did you know in the last five years the bbl is the fastest growing plastic surgery procedure and it has more than doubled in just five years despite the fact that it is so insanely popular and by the way there are no signs of it slowing down it is literally the plastic surgery procedure with the highest mortality rate. There was a study that found that one in 3,000 women die after this procedure. So just like we're discussing, it's dangerous, but why do so many people do it, right? Why is it so popular? And the number one reason is that a lot of people see it as a natural alternative to like silicone or implants, which makes sense, right? Why not yeah. use my own fat as opposed to a foreign substance? Because there is less of a chance of rejection. But the biggest reason why it is deadly is because of the fat. The fat that is being injected into the buttocks, right? It has to be suprafacial, okay? It has to be injected suprafacially. So there's something called the fascia, which is a connective tissue that wraps around muscles and nerves and blood vessels. The fat is actually supposed to be above the salad roll, above the, above the fascia. But if they go underneath, they're penetrating that fascia, going under the muscle and having access to the nerves. And those blood vessels so the gluteal veins are attached and they're branching off of the iliac vein which goes directly into the vena cava which goes directly into your heart so if they go below the fascia inject the fat you are literally one way trip to the heart and or, or to the lungs the uh, fat embolism which is you die and that is why it is deadly and there was actually a clinic in miami where just in one clinic alone 13 people died from a bbl so a lot of these things were happening in these places and people started putting one and one, one, one together and they're like, okay, this is why are so many people dying from this compared to other procedures? There was actually an article making the argument that it's like, of course, going to someone who is trained, obviously, you know, actually credentialed to do this. But then there was an argument that was saying, what if the procedure itself is flawed? I will say, however, it has gotten slightly safer, but the only reason it has gotten safer was because so many people started dying. There was actually autopsies performed on those people that died, so they were able to see what was going wrong. And that's the only reason it has gone a little bit safer. But even then, it still has a very high mortality rate. And then the autopsies, they were finding the fat emboli in the lungs and the heart. From my research that I found in the articles I found, they were saying actually one of the biggest factors was actually the fact that these women were put under general anesthesia as opposed to local, right? So general anesthesia is when you get knocked out. They're saying it's actually better to go with local anesthesia so you'd be awake right now, a lot of people don't like the thought of that of being awake during the procedure but if you're awake you can actually feel a little more and alert the surgeon like whoa that's really deep and that could actually alert them to hey you are passing the fascia mm -hmm. not only that when they're asleep and relaxed the blood vessels are more dilated and easier to puncture the majority of procedures are done in the united states worldwide there's something going on in this country that is not normal and i think it's really important for people to acknowledge that and think about it and analyze that and no issue is black and white there's no right or wrong answer mm -hmm. humans are so complex and issues can be so dynamic and multifaceted so it's not this is wrong this is good it's more really delving deep into all those all those facets of this issue and this topic where you talk about truly the pros and cons of it and i think that's really really important for people to talk about before they can potentially lose their life um there's a lady named and um she went to colombia and did some work on her body. And unfortunately she passed away because of doing too much work. I got my first massage four days after my BBO and I almost fainted from the pain, to be honest. Hey yo, plastic surgery check. I'm having trouble with men right now. Maybe if I had a big old, a huge butt, mm -hmm. that uh -huh. I get even bigger love.
Hello there. Brazilian doctor Ivo Pitonji, the person who popularized this surgery, believed that beauty was a human right, but he himself said that its pursuit can be a very troubling process. Pitonji would say the most important thing you can do is to have a good ego, and then you don't need an operation. Basically saying if you already love yourself, you don't need to get plastic surgery. But Let's be honest, y'all. There is a money side to this. My mans didn't get a private island and become super rich by convincing people to love themselves. I've said this many times before in videos, but I guess I'll just repeat myself. The world tells you that there's something wrong with you. They label it as a problem, and then they make a product that can solve your problem. The BBL trend profits off of women's insecurities with their body. Aesthetic surgery is something that no one really gives any attention to, but race and plastic surgery go hand in hand. Whether to erase your ethnic features and to make you look more socially acceptable by making yourself look uh, more Eurocentric to making your body look more black and Latinx. Fetishization of black women's bottoms goes all the way back to slavery and colonialism, which can be traced back to 1810, where an African woman was brought to London by a British doctor and exhibited in Piccadilly and then around the country as the hot and taut Venus. Crowds would pay to examine her body, and in particular, her butt. It was considered a commodity. This pattern of picking and choosing what to like on a ethnic person's body is not new and it still happens to this day. People fetishize Asian eyes. I mean, we got Oliver London or whatever the hell his name is over here saying that he's Korean. The culture of cosmetic surgery emerged from the country's history of eugenics. Dr. Renato Kiel, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but honestly don't care because he's a horrible person. He was the founder of the Eugenics Society of Sao Paulo in 1918. He expressed in his support for surgery in his book, The Cure for Ugliness. His aim was simple and I quote, to perfect Brazil's population through the extinction of the black and the rainforest dwelling races. <sighs> Beautification for him was intertwined with whiteness. It always leads back to cherry picking POC features. The BBL trend is grabbing a black woman's body and a Latinx woman's body, picking it apart, repackaging it, and then selling it to millions of people. I'm so tired of people acting as if plastic surgery has nothing to do with race. We have whole ass people crying on TikTok for being grateful that their nose no longer looks too ethnic. What I'm about to say might get me canceled, but oh well. The historical context, the reasoning as to why people do it, the trends, the picking and choosing, plastic surgery just isn't empowering, especially for young women who are barely trying to figure themselves out. YouTuber Jordan Theresa made a very powerful video on this topic. She talks about how beauty standards are rooted in capitalism, racism, and many other things, and also how plastic surgery teaches you that you can buy your way to success and beauty. It's not something you need to get done. Your body will be more accepted. You'll have more opportunities. You can get more likes, which in a way, this is where the argument for plastic surgery gets really tricky because one can argue that it is empowering because you are benefiting off of the patriarchy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people want that lifestyle. However, what happens when this body type isn't the trend anymore? I think the argument of I do it for myself is one that's super redundant at this point. How many more years is this cycle gonna keep going on where we're told that something's wrong with us and that we have to fix it. Women smeared arsenic on their faces to smooth fine lines. During the Victorian era, dressmakers mixed arsenic with copper to create vibrant emerald green, which was on trend at the time. And women who wore green died horrible deaths, vomiting green until they perished. How do we win in a society that labels natural women ugly? But then when a woman tries to fix it through plastic surgery, she's seen as fake. It's like we just can't win. So instead, we turn the phrase fake into empowering. We're using words like that deflects questions and shut down the conversation about cosmetic work altogether because it breaks the illusion of the ultimate glow up. Insecurity itself is not profitable. It's the empowering part that is. In an age where ads are carefully curated 
to target our insecurities, it's hard to label the action of giving in as empowering. The more we embrace our natural selves, or at least acknowledge our natural selves, we can reverse the cycle of feeling always pressure to change every year. Women are expected to be beautiful. That is the default for women. The default for women is to be beautiful. But I really think that body neutrality is far more important than body positivity. The default should be that we exist and that's good enough. We are more than our bodies. And the more that we come to self-acceptance, the more that we erase that stupid quote that has been tied to women for so many years. Beauty is pain, but it doesn't have to be. couldn't get my lips and mess up y'all thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end of the video please leave a duck emoji and also don't forget to comment down below what your opinion is on all of this i read like all y'all's comments even the mean ones so watch your mouth and follow me on my socials this is my soundcloud this is my Instagram. Remember to do something you love today. Go watch some anime. Go play IMVU. <laughs> Just remember to do something you love today. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. And bye. I need to take this off because it's literally so hot. It's literally 95 degrees today. I can't <laughs> get this off of me. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I'm going to go take all of this off. <sighs> See you next time. Bye.